lost in mastering not only the skills of the carrier update, but also the skills of the teleportation. Joining us now for a loaded and rolling our community segment of the day here today. Thomas, we had a couple of things to talk about as we head into the start of 2024. First thing with driver pay and some new data coming in saying that pay is up specifically in two certain buckets. What the buckets, thought? they're pretty fun. Looking at the mileage buckets and everything, uh, when you're looking at 40 to 50 cent per mile range and then 50 to 60 cent per mile range, there's some new data by the NTI, not the National Truck Load Index, but uh, National Transportation Institute. And what it talked about was that driver wages since before the pandemic have risen. So not only are we seeing a movement in the brackets, uh, the brackets are jumping mm -hmm. uh, from that uh, 50 to 40 to 50 percent mile cent per mile was down like 5% and then 50 to 60 cent per mile year over year was up 6%. The numbers don't matter. The thought matters. What matters is that drivers who originally started out with less than one year of experience, three years later make the same as the most experienced drivers used to before the pandemic. The pay scales have jumped that great. And the second big takeaway was that uh, it used to be the folks who made the most wage gains through 2022 and into 2023 were less than three years of experience. Mm -hmm. But now more experienced drivers are being prioritized now that there's too many drivers. So the pay gains are starting to flip towards retaining. So of course we have this conversation back and forth of the quote unquote driver shortage when in reality we know that there is still too much capacity on the roads. And a lot of this as we've talked about is not necessarily a shortage of drivers but an under or like a mismatched utilization. And a lot of that comes from pay scales. You've got senior drivers who aren't willing to do certain work because they feel like they're not being paid for the experience. Boom, that creates a fall shortage. You've got drivers who are branded into the industry who are saying, okay, I can do this for 30 cents a mile, but I'm gonna need lots of miles. Boom, that creates a mismatch in the industry, right? Do you see now that balance maybe coming back into the more balanced phase of things because we see these bumps for the senior drivers and they're getting more willing to take what they're due? We are seeing the starts of that, but right now the, the best, the punchline of the joke is that uh, you have pay that is trying to fix a very poor standard of living, a lifestyle that is highly unhealthy. If you look at drivers, you're the most unhealthy on the road, according to some government sources. The last time they checked in the mid 2010s, uh, they found out that not only did a lot of drivers not have health insurance, but they were like statistically higher uh, than average to have chronic health problems. It is uh, by far a sedentary job. And so when we're looking at these driver pay raises, uh, we are seeing progress because in any marketplace, if, the, uh, if you can't find labor, wages go up and if your job is not designed to take care of your your labor's needs then they're less likely to join so i do think we're seeing this repositioning uh we're going to continue though to see folks saying there's a shortage i do believe it's a shortage i believe it's a retention issue fix your lifestyle problems make yourself a better network if you even do like a modified hub and spoke network and stuff uh you could literally have drivers on your nodes at home ltl does it ltl has like a mm -hmm. sub was like 20 to 30 percent turnover rate uh depending upon it uh, otr over the road point to point semi-random dispatch trucking is the only segment that has this 95 percent if you were a private fleet you would have lower turnover so pay is going to be the thing that we're going to continue to see moving up because one thing that the industry does not want to address because unfortunately it would be a uh, uh, yeah, there's no, one, there's not an immediate way to fix it. And two, uh, the system is designed to exploit drivers is that uh, we're just going to throw more money at you. <laughs> yeah, take better care of your people and the intern will take better care of you. All right, let's move on to our second topic of the morning. We got the LMI out for December. What are we seeing? Obviously, still too much capacity. I'm going to pull up my charts. I just want to toss one up on the screen here. The overall LMI was around like 50. Uh, anything above a 50 is an expansion. Anything below a 50 is a contraction. So when we're looking at that, it's uh, it is basically the logistics managers index asks a whole bunch of people what's going on. Transportation prices is the big one. When you're looking here at this chart, 43.1. So prices are still going down. So we're still in a situation right now where you see improvement when even in May of last year in the middle, we were bottomed out at 27. So we're trying to approach that 50 for a form of stabilization. Let's kick it over to transportation capacity. This is another one that's important to watch. 63.3. You're right, folks. If you ask them 
bunch of logistics managers, uh, not you know how they feel about their transportation capacity. There's still more of it, so we are seeing it. It's still going down though. If you look at the overall trend from the baseline, and then we should have the overall LMI as the first chart. I don't know if it was updated. Uh, it is at 50.6. So we are finally starting to see when we when you want to look at LMI data. Where are we at in the cycle? Uh, should be one of the final charts here. It looks like a little bit of a U. There we go. Uh, and that's going to be one to watch because the overall LMI kind of gives you an idea of what's going on from a macro standpoint. We look at upstream, downstream, inventories, and all that jazz. And, and that's something that we are, things are slowly getting better. Uh, final fun tidbit is that expectations for prices is at a 70. So we are expecting, uh, if you ask respondents, well, will prices go up in the next year? Uh, they are expecting it to definitely do that. I know it sounds like common sense, but it will eventually go up. The big question is when. And how much is the other <laughs> part of that as well. Let's finish this out by talking about spot rates and the jump from the holiday. Not as big as you necessarily expected, right? Exactly. And I mean, it's really hard because we look at these large data sets, especially coming out of the pandemic, you have two or three years of just wonky data. Mm -hmm. Imagine that if we were in 2019 and 2024, that's probably the situation where we're looking at right now, trying to best figure out, oh, we took this pause, we had this crazy capacity boom, now we're having a capacity bust, and we're trying to pick up the pieces. So I, I'm pretty excited. I think 2023 is going to be a good uh, normalization kind of year. So looking into this year, we want to keep an eye on it. Uh, but uh, the spot rate expectations were much higher than they were because not only did fuels continue to decline, so your all-in rate, you didn't get as much of a fuel surcharge. That actually had an impact on LMI transportation prices as well. They noted a fuel surcharge uh, helped contribute, but also there's just, there's too many trucks and it's, it's a very fuzzy number, but at the end of the day, when you're dealing with these fuzzy numbers, we got to look at it from the angle. So mm -hmm. uh, earlier, Donnie had talked about, uh, you know, net revocations and operating authorities. We still have significantly higher operating authorities. So good for shippers, not good for carriers. So this care, you know, doing the carrier update and being the trucking expert, things are lean, but if you're trying to ship things, keep partying on. So Thomas, when we talk about now the way that spot rates end in 2023 versus as we move into our start of our 2024 contract season, what do those two kind of relationships look like with this? Spot rates typically lead contracts 60 to 90 days. So we should expect that contract contract rates continue to fall. Mm -hmm. Now, usually spot rates are like the canary in the coal mine. So if we see a significant upswing in spot market rates that will generally tell shippers who are thinking about their contracts a whole year out, uh, it's like a leading indicator. Uh, if you see a bunch of clouds in the sky, maybe rain's coming, that we need to adjust. Right now it's not there. So I would continue to expect at least uh, single digit decreases Remember, like one to five percent shippers are going to continue to push down it's only smart but the big concern for carriers is not shippers uh, alluded to earlier this week it's really other carriers and brokers brokers are getting more access to these rfps they want this freight they're going to try to reprice it they actually need to aggressively reprice correctly because they screwed up half their book when it goes underwater so this is going to be crunch time for them other carriers if you're second place in the routing guide you really got to get on the the board or if you're trying to update your customer mix because maybe it turns out that customer you really like during the pandemic pandemic who paid you a lot is just a bad customer. I've seen it so many times. I love tire companies. We all need tires, but you ever see floor loaded tires and expect your trailers for that are preloaded to get unloaded in like two weeks? No. So then they hoard your trailers. These are examples of when we're evaluating our customer mixes and portfolios. In spite of the fact we have very poor pricing power, continuously prune the tree, just like those little Japanese trees. But it's, instead of that, it's tens of thousands of lanes and your branches are customers. So if you're uh, looking for something to clean out in 2024, maybe take a look at your customer mix. Yeah, does it bring you happy? Does it bring you joy? Does this customer bring you joy? Or does it bring you pain? <laughs> All right, Thomas, thank you for joining us for this. Of course, Loaded and Rolling live on Tuesday afternoons right here on Freight Waves TV. And you can find that in our newsletters as well, part of our community's segment. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this.